Hello and welcome to another episode of Beast Pillisus, the Hairy Beast, where we talk about everything hairy and extinct. I'm your host, Benjamin Berger. To celebrate the new year, 2014, we're going to be talking about marsupials versus placental mammals. You probably know that marsupials include things like kangaroos, koala bears, possums, and placental mammals include cows, humans, monkeys, rabbits, rodents, giraffes, lions, tigers, and bears. But what really is the difference between marsupials and placental mammals? In marsupials, the placenta is very short-lived, where in placental mammals, they have a very long-lived placenta that provides nutrients and nutrition to that developing little embryo. And so when babies are born of marsupials, they're teeny little wormy babies. And when they're born from placental mammals, they kind of resemble the adults. They're much bigger and further along in their development. This is why marsupials have pouches. The little teeny wormy babies can have a place to go and start nursing and get that nutrients from the mother and have a safe place that they can be since they can't really move around. One of the questions that we have is when did this happen? When did we have this split between placental mammals and marsupial mammals? And to answer this question, we have to go back into the fossil record. Now, we're going to be going back to the age of the dinosaurs dinosaurs because this split occurred during the last period of the age of the dinosaurs during the Cretaceous period. Now the thing that we have to do when we travel back in time is to know what we're looking for because we can't uh, travel back to the age of dinosaurs and sit there and watch the birth of a marsupial mammal, a placental mammal, and see if there's this difference. What we have to do is look for skeletal and dental features. Now marsupials have a whole suite of characters that placental mammals don't have. The first one that's going to be really important to us is the epic pubic bone. The epubic bone is a little extra bone, it, they have it on both sides, um, that comes off the pelvis. And this actually provides some support for that pouch. And so we can look for the presence of this bone in fossils uh, from the Cretaceous period. We can also look at the auditory bullet, this is the middle ear, whether it's composed of the allus phenoid or not. We can look to see if there's large openings in the palate. The other thing we can look at is an inflected angular process of the dentary in the lower jaw. The other thing we can look at is whether there's more upper incisors than lower, which is a characteristic of marsupials. Another characteristic of marsupials is that their molars on their upper teeth have these weird styler sort of shelves on the outside of their molar teeth. And then the other thing we can look at is the dental formula. So marsupials have three premolars and four molars. So all of these things will be preserved in the fossil record and maybe give us a clue of when this split occurred. Now often these fo fossils are not necessarily called placental mammals and marsupial mammals. We refer to the terms metatherians and eutherians. Metatherians being the group that will eventually lead to marsupials, and eutherians, which are the group, the larger group, including the animals that will lead to true placentals. We use these terms because we can't necessarily view how um, the reproductive system works in these fossils, but we have these bony clues that we can look for. Now, the earliest eutherian is Eomaya scansoria. Eomaya scansoria is this like little teeny sort of little possum-like mammal. It's had fur. We have some preservation of its fur. It's 125 to 130 million years old. It was discovered in China. They split apart the rock and they had two sides of this little fossil. It comes from the early Cretaceous. So let's take a look at it and see what features it has that might be more placental versus more marsupial. So it's an early eutherian, and we have all a bunch of bones, some beautifully preserved bones, a very complete skeleton, which, as you'll find out, is very rare during the Cretaceous. So it's an exceptional fossil. And we can look down. Let's see if it has an epipubic bone. So we'll go down here, and we'll take a look. And uh, oh, oh, wait, there, yeah, there is an epipubic bone in Eomaya, just like a marsupial. So this. This is kind of puzzling. Why do they consider Eomaya a eutherian and not a metatherian leading to marsupials if it has an epipubic bone? Well, it has to do with the dental formula. Now, if you remember, marsupials have four molars. 
So let's count the number of molars. One, two, three. So it's got three molars and has three molars on the upper part and three molars on the lower part. This is more characteristic of placental mammals than marsupial mammals. So this is why it's considered the earliest eutherian. Now, let's count the premolars. There's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's five premolars in the upper part and five premolars in the lower part. We're hoping to only have four. So these guys have an extra tooth that will be later lost. Hmm, interesting. They also have one canine above and below, and they have five incisors above and four incisors below. Wait, more incisors above? That's another marsupial characteristic. So Eomaya has a few, well, it has one characteristic of having three molars, which is a characteristic of placental mammals. But the rest of its anatomy appears to be more marsupial-like. There are some differences in the wrist bones and the ankle bones to indicate that it is a eutherian as well. But it was more marsupial-like than placental-like. Now we have to travel further up the, uh, the column to more recent age to find another really good skeleton. And that skeleton is Zam Lambda de Lestiles, Lechiae which is found in the Mongolian desert of Asia in his Campanian age, which places about 75 to 71 million years ago. And there's actually a, a whole bunch of bones and skulls, including some really nice skeletons of Zamlamdelestes. And let's take a look to see uh, what sort of characteristics this little mammal had compared to our previous Eomaya that lived so much earlier. Let's see if it has epipubic bone. We'll go, go in there and Wait, wait, huh? It has epipubic bones. Zambalestes has epipubic bones. So it's like a marsupial. Let's also count the teeth. Um, let's see, we have one, two, three, I think three. Maybe, maybe that, that might be a premolar there. So uh, I don't know. Well, it's got probably, well, people say it has three molars, maybe four molars. And it's got three upper premolars and three lower premolars. But look how it's stretched out that nose. It's got that really long nose. So it's got one canine that's way out there, and it's got three incisors above and below. But it's got a really long, long nose. Kind of interesting. Again, it has some eutherian characteristics. One of the other things to note about Zamblamblestes is that it has a more reduced stylar shelf on those upper molars. So this is another characteristic that indicating that it it is a eutherian, early eutherian, but it still has an epipubic bone. Now we go to the very end of the Cretaceous, and we find teeth like these. These teeth completely lack a stylar shelf. This is Proto-Ungulatum danii, an early ancestor to ungulates. It doesn't have the big stylar shelf. Now, unfortunately, Proto-Ungulatum danii, we don't have any skeletons, so we don't know if it had an epipubic bone or not. But its teeth look like uh, modern sort of placental mammal teeth. They also have three molars and four premolars, and this is a condition that we see in placental mammals. So most people agree that Protoungulatum donii is a placenta mammal, even though we don't have a skeleton with an epipubic bone nor can we evaluate those other traits that we need a skeleton. So go out there and find a protoungulatum skeleton. So let's look at the fossils that we have. We have Eomaya scandorsia. It goes all the way back to 125 million years ago. It has an epipubic bone. It has a dental formula that's more like placental mammals, as well as some wrist and ankle bone features as well. But it probably was very much like marsupials today. Then we have Zam Lambdalestes lechii, which is around 70 to 75 million years ago, which also has an epipubic bone, but it has a dental formula and some features that indicate that it's on that trajectory to becoming uh, a placental mammal. And then we have Protoungulatum danii, which occurs at the very end of the Cretaceous, right? at the time the dinosaurs were going extinct. For most of the Cretaceous, even these eutherian mammals probably had a reproduction strategy that was very similar to marsupials. Tiny little wormy babies being born, going into a pouch, and getting bigger through time. 
and that this change in retaining the embryo longer in the uterus with a and with a placenta that provided nutrients, we probably didn't see the modern sort of placental way of reproduction until the very end of the Cretaceous. Yet the split between marsupials and placentas probably occurred in the early Cretaceous. If you want to learn more about mammals from the age of dinosaurs, you should definitely check out this book, Mammals from the Age of Dinosaurs, Origins, Evolution, and Structure. I'll see you around. <laughs> Bye.